Hello again, everybody. I am John, and this is the EAP Society's Quick Take Tuesday, where we are continuing our series where we go through each and every soundboard released by the Follow That Dream label. And today we've got kind of a special one to me. This is Live in L.A. Uh, this is Elvis's show from May the 11th, 1974, at the Inglewood Forum in Los Angeles, also known as the L.A. Forum. Um, and uh, in addition to giving us the show on soundboard, FTD provided us with a lovely, lovely picture book, which we will go through. Um, and let's just, let's go ahead and do that now. We'll do a little quick, uh, a little quick look through. I'm not going to look at every page like Jamie does because this is a quick take Tuesday. But um, let me tell you why this release is special to me. This, uh, before I get to that, this is, uh, starts with some pictures of Elvis in Los Angeles in the 1950s uh, that are nice and ones that I was less familiar with than the 74 pictures, which are also very good. These are from 56, obviously. Really good shots. Uh, when he was making Love Me Tender, Los Angeles was obviously a place that Elvis spent a lot of time in because of his movie career. And um, then we got 57. Good stuff. Singing at the piano. 1970, also at the L.A. Forum. That's a show I would love to hear. Uh, 70, this is November of 70. There's the, the, the big fringe suit that uh, I think is at the Hollywood Casino in Mississippi now. Um, and here's the airport, the arrival for the big day. And we've got pictures from the afternoon show and the evening show. Uh, a lot of collectors will also realize we've got a lot of good 8mm footage from both of these shows that exists. Unfortunately, that wasn't released. At the afternoon show, he wore the peacock suit. And in the evening show, he wore the uh, American Eagle suit. Not the Aloha Eagle, but the embroidered American Eagle suit. So now let me get back to telling why this release is special to me. As you guys, I'm sure, are aware, if me and Jamie feel that FTD is not doing something right, we let you know. We, uh, we sometimes go overboard with talking about things that they don't, don't do right if it really gets on our nerves. Or we, I won't say that we sometimes do that. We can be guilty of that on occasion. So I want to take some time to shed some light on the other side of the equation. Um, I know a lot of you guys as fans have probably had an opportunity to meet Ernst Jorgensen, who runs FTE and managed Elvis's catalog for BMG for all these years. But if you haven't, he's a very nice guy, and he's a very passionate Elvis fan, and he's really done God's work for the past, what, 40 years now that he's been working on Elvis's catalog. Um, he's done really good work. And one of the things that must be said about Ernst Jorgensen is that he's very good at accepting feedback from fans and acting on it. Um, lots of the things that we consider great about Follow That Dream and the, the time that Ernst spent at Sony BMG, uh, he did because you know he heard things from fans and he responded. He's very, very good about that. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, Sebastian, who oversaw the 2009 remasters, uh, started as a guy who ran a website that was a very passionate Elvis fan website called Master in Session, and he criticized a lot of the releases on uh, uh, the sound quality on the releases of the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s masters. Well, you know, lots of labels would have probably just kind of been mad about that, but Ernst said, okay, you've got me listening. Show me how to do it the right way. And what that eventually led to was Elvis's catalog being treated digitally like to the gold standard of digital mastering treatment. Uh, no other artist that I can think of, no other mainstream artist has had their catalog handled with the kind of care and attention to detail that Sebastian and Vic Anasini 
did in to with the masters in 2009 i still tell everybody i know it's not a sexy uh answer but the best sounding versions of elvis's albums are the 2009 masters that you find on the album box sets you can quibble with uh, the mastering of maybe some of the sun uh re recordings some people prefer Cavan buds because they're cleaner um some people prefer other uh, releases because they're more accurate to the Sun Records, but I think the 2009 ones kind of reach a happy medium. Really, almost without exception, if I'm reaching for a, a reference quality version of an Elvis master, I will reach for the 2009 um, box set. But the reason that I'm bringing all of this up is that Live in LA was a release that um, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but this is a release that when I was talking to Ernst, I said, hey, you know what would be a good idea? You should release that uh, Los Angeles Forum show from 74, because I'd got wind that it existed on Soundboard. And, uh, uh, and uh, I remember Ernst said, well, you know, it's too bad that we don't have the one where he does You Can Have Her, because at the afternoon show, he does the Roy Hamilton song, You Can Have Her, I Don't Want Her. And uh, it's the only time Elvis ever performed that. So I said, you should release the soundboard of the evening show and then record, uh, you know, include that little clip of you can have her an audience recording from the afternoon show. Now, I got to say, I'm probably not the only person who mentioned this to Ernst. I'm sure there were other people requesting this show, too. But not too long after we had that conversation, this came out. Like, I mean, when I'm saying not too long after, it was several months later, but he did put it out. And it's not the first time that it's happened. There are at least two shows that I requested that are put out officially. So if you get a chance to talk to the guy, he listens. Like, if he thinks there's fan interest and you can make a good case for it, he will absolutely listen. And he's very responsive and uh, does a good job. Now, I had no idea when I was requesting that that we, we would be getting this lovely photo book as part of the deal. That's kind of an extra added bonus. And uh, it's very nice. Anyway, you get the idea with these pictures. And uh, they close with some pictures from 76 and 77 near L.A. or on the West Coast. And um, I had a little bit of an ulterior motive in asking for this show to be released. And that ulterior motive is that I happen to be, in addition to being an Elvis fan, a huge Led Zeppelin fan. And this is the night that Elvis met Led Zeppelin. And I knew from the audience recording that he mentions Led Zeppelin in the show. And I was like, that's too cool. I got to have that on soundboard. So that's sort of why I was asking for this release. It's also a very good show in its own right. Let's go through the track listing. It's kind of a standard 74 um, Spring Tour 74 show, but we've got uh, 2001, CC Rider, I Got a Woman, Amen, Love Me, Trying to Get to You, All Shook Up, Teddy Bear, Don't Be Cruel, Love Me Tender, Steamroller Blues, nice one, uh, Hound Dog, Fever, Polk Salad Annie, Why Me Lord, Suspicious Minds, Introductions, I Can't Stop Loving You, Help Me, and American Trilogy, Let Me Be There, Funny How Time Slips Away, Big Boss Man, Can't Help Falling in Love, Closing Vamp, and then it ends with You Can Have Her, I Don't Want Her, the audience recorded version. Now, it's important to note that even though um, this is packaged as the May 11th, 1974 show, the tape runs out sometime in the middle of Funny How Time Slips Away. So the last few songs are from the uh, San Bernardino, California show on May 10th. Uh, it's it is what it is. It's what they had to do. Uh, more of that has actually been released on another FTD that we'll talk about at another time. Um, but of the part of the uh, show that we have, it is complete. You do get the little line about Led Zeppelin. Uh, Elvis is in good voice, good spirits. Uh, the presentation with this is top notch. I mean, when they started doing these books, they really found a winning formula, I think. Uh, one that they've gone to the well with a lot lately. But hey, who doesn't love a good audio-visual presentation of Elvis, right? I mean, you can have just the standard soundboard, or you can have the soundboard with all these great pictures. 
I know which one I would choose. I really like this show. I'm biased, but I'm going to give this one a four out of five. Um, hope you guys enjoyed hearing my little story about that. Hope I wasn't too rambly and it made sense. I'm doing this off the cuff, but uh, let me know what you think about Live in L.A. Is it a good show? I think it's a good show. I uh, would love to see something done with the 8mm footage that exists from these shows officially at some point in the future. That would be very nice. But uh, tell us what you think. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Join us next Tuesday for another Quick Take Tuesday. And join us every Friday for our main episodes where me and Jamie talk about all kinds of Elvis topics. Um, also, I want to mention that if you subscribe on YouTube, there's a little button down there that says subscribe. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime. And it'll make sure that you don't miss any of our top quality Elvis content. So until next time, this is John saying TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.